Good evening. Welcome back to the Almost Nightly Firearms Expo. This is episode number 22. We are two minutes late, and that's two minutes for two ways, so keep that in mind if you're going to complain. Um, I don't really care if you complain or not. Uh, you can complain all you want. Uh, doesn't mean I have to listen. Um, probably shouldn't berate my audience before we really even get into the meat and potatoes of the show, but hey, it's going to be that kind of night, I suppose. So, um, on the panel tonight, we have the future Governor of Ohio, Men of Tupperware. How are you, sir? Very, very good. Very nice. Glad to hear it. And then we have DJ Play Nice. Yo, yo, yodel. He likes to yodel, apparently. So, uh, either one of you get to do anything 2A today or yesterday? I got to do a bunch of 2A stuff today. Very good. Let's, let's hear it. Well, I do my usual every Tuesday and Thursday, which is call up my state reps and state senators, and I'm like, hey, why isn't constitutional carry a thing in Ohio yet? Only to find out, well, not from them, because obviously they're both out in committees and stuff like that, but found out later to, uh, tonight that apparently we had our second subcommittee for Stand Your Ground here, in, or not Stand Your Ground, for Constitutional Care here in Ohio. It was not really a technical subcommittee because what it was supposed to be, it was essentially supposed to be people for Constitutional Carry, but what it turned out to be was basically putting amendments into the Constitutional Carry bill to make it stronger. And as far as I know, they have. I haven't found out what the amendments were entirely yet, but supposedly from people that, have, that were the ones writing them, they're like, yeah, we're trying to make this the best possible chance we have right now of this passing. I also found out that apparently constitutional carry has been in every Ohio General Assembly since 1997, so it's basically 24 years that they've been pissing us off and fucking us around when it comes to constitutional carry. So, And it'll also be uh, two to three weeks before we get another hearing because the main chair for this committee is not going to be back in Columbus next week, and then they're not sure if they're going to come in for Memorial Day to do uh, hearings and stuff like that. So it could be as far away for, as three weeks right now before Constitution Carey is heard again in the state of Ohio. All right. I'm going to say, sound like you've been a uh, busy bee. DJ, anything for you, sir? I, I cannot even begin to fade that litany of 2A action. Uh, double back on some things that I needed to, to watch. Uh, Minnesota Caucus had a video this morning that I was linked to, and uh, so I checked them out. Uh, otherwise, I'm just woefully behind and looking to uh, improve that situation. Very nice. Yeah, I need to go back and check out the Minnesota uh, caucus video. Um, started watching it, then uh, Capcom Cowboy wanted to watch Blue's Clues, so uh, he typically wins. So I have to go back and catch up on that. Um, I did see a good video tonight from Budbusters um, talking about NFA trusts and, you know, should you get one or not? thought that was pretty interesting um i caught wind that the comment period should be opening up potentially tomorrow for um the serialized uppers for ars and 80 percenters and all that fun garbage that they uh decided to slap all together um apparently it's supposed to be going up on the federal register tomorrow um, obviously tomorrow's not here, so we don't know 100%, but, uh, that is the rumor mill. And then, apparently, they are going to be looking at pistol braces again. Surprise, surprise, we already, uh, had one that was coming as well, but, um, from what I understand, uh, whatever they're trying with it now, um, was sent to the White House, and they're going to be monkeying around with that so we'll have to see what happens um as for myself did i 2a today uh caught up on some videos went to the doctor uh since i was going to the doctor i normally dress um in comfortable clothes that way if i gotta you know get changes to do a gown or something i don't have to worry about taking off uh a bunch of crap so i chose to carry with the conceal carry fanny pack today um, always a great choice when you're wearing something like gym shorts. So, uh, went with that ulterior, uh, ulterior, uh, mode of carry. It's, like I said, it's nice every once in a while. Um, other than that, uh, you know, like I said, just 
catching up on videos, filming my own videos. I've been slacking on that recently. Um, I shouldn't say recently. I've been slacking on that for a while. Um, life's just been busy, and I haven't been able to get around to it. So recently, I've got a bunch of stuff that I really needed to do reviews or unboxings on, things like that. So got those filmed recently in the last couple days. Uh, got those edited. Now I'm just going to have to get them all scheduled. Uh, yeah, so that's all that's going on two-way for me. Um, so either one of you guys or anybody out in the text chat have any questions, comments, concerns, anything you want us to talk about. Um, if you're out in the text chat and you're not one of the people that I send an email to, please feel free to jump in. This is a conversation where we're just going to sit here, talk gun stuff, and uh, have a good time. All you need is a working cell phone. Um, you click the link that's pinned up in the top of the comments, and it will take you into the StreamYard stuff. It's going to ask you for a couple permissions if you've never given it permission before. And uh, then you're rocking and rolling. You're going to be sitting in here BSing with us like uh, some professional dude. Um, professional dude I use very loosely. Uh, but yeah, so... Like I said, would love to have anybody uh, jump in here and, you know, let's have a conversation. So, uh, team up, DJ, anything? Yeah, Actually, out there in the chat, uh, we've got uh, TPC, poor conservatives out there, G23, uh, saying hello to everybody. Uh, Makoyo, always omnipresent. Um, also, we got uh, G-Webs in the house. And who else here? Burnaby Sanchez. Hey, man, how you doing? Uh, South Florida DCL, uh, and we might have some questions coming in. Alexander Rocker just got uh, added to the crowd out there. So, uh, T-Mot, what was that? I was going to say, I forgot to mention, for my 2A of the day, I was also open carrying for about six hours today. Very nice. Uh, what did you choose to carry? Uh, I started out carrying my Taurus G2C, and then it turned into my Taurus TX22 throughout the day because when I got back home, I was able to switch out, and I had to do some yard work, and I usually carry that around the yard for in case I need to deal with uh, rabid raccoons and stuff like that around here. Very good. And say, how many rabid raccoons do you all get over there? And say, I'm not too far from you, and uh, it's very rare that we end up with a rabid well, raccoon. Well, it's not really that they have rabies, but like... I mean, if you, like, stumble upon a mom and her baby, she might attack you, and I've almost said that happened to me a couple times here when I was picking berry patches and stuff, so I prefer to just carry outside when it happens with that. And we also have a bunch of uh, groundhogs, too, that are pretty bad, so. Just carry crackers. Or 9mm. You should have just kept carrying the 9, because she would have saw you with a 9mm and been like, oh, he's carrying 9mm, he's no threat. So would those be peanut butter or cheese crackers, or we just take talking straight up saltines raccoons what's the best don't care. <laughs> raccoon don't care so uh open carry i had a great experience uh with that in kansas city missouri last weekend i don't get to open carry uh, here in omaha nebraska but while i was there i brought out my favorite holster um that i finally got to wear outside um walking around with it was quite an adjustment not something that i had ever done before uh so so many first evers for me as regards my firearm rights and everything that went along with it everything went so well i didn't draw extra attention as i thought that i might i mean sure you know casual glances here or there no one showed shock on their faces um i wasn't in a lot of places where people might have carried frequently uh, I certainly didn't notice anyone else. Um, this was, you know, on the streets and the sidewalks, uh, you know, parking area uh, to and from the hotel uh, and outside it. Was able to sit outside on the patio of uh, of that hotel, having some cigarettes and and chatting with some other folks who were trying to enjoy the the weekend. And the attention that it drew just wasn't as dramatic as I thought it might be. I know that you guys get the opportunity to do a uh, different carry sometimes in different places, but this has really reminded me and set to home how the difference between the states and county cities, um, all the way down, 
how there's this kind of inconsistency in how we are sometimes made to feel because we w desire to carry firearms. I don't like that it's not normalized. I don't really think that there was any indication to me that everything that I've been thinking over the last two or three years now, becoming going from advocate to activist, that would indicate that there's something that should prohibit us from having that everywhere. Constitutional carry came to mean something quite different to me this weekend, guys. Um, <laughs> I feel a newbie a lot of the time. These new experiences, I'm going to have to do some deeper thinking. Not everything, of course, has made itself self-aware. Uh, as regards this, I, I've got a, a head change happening here, and it's, it's pretty exciting. Sounds good. Yeah, I don't, like, I'm not really sure about the difference, like, because I feel like there is a difference between, like, open carry and concealed carry versus, and then obviously constitutional carry, which is what we should have anyway, and we should have had really since 1776 in this country, or 1791, whatever you want to call the original founding of this nation. And I feel like in general, it's just, and again, it, I think it goes back what you said, DJ, with a lot of differences between uh, city, state, uh, county, whatever the case be. And I think you'll always definitely get more people at city levels who will just be like, no, you can't have that thing. Because again, these tend to be the places that traditionally vote hardcore Democrat, whereas it's the rural areas that tend to vote very hard Republican or third party libertarian, whatever the case be. Got websites out there in the chat uh, saying constitutional carry is a very authentic experience to carry a gun with the trust and respect. You hear me? Of yeah. the whole country. Yes. Oh, okay. Because I, I keep talking and it wasn't coming through for some reason. But apparently it's working now. So um, I was trying to ask uh, DJ. So you had mentioned that you, uh, you this has changed your thoughts on constitutional carry so how do you think about constitutional carry before and how exactly are you looking at it now well i cert I, I think it would be better to start by saying that i just now understand it to a greater degree so uh, you know stepping from being naive to becoming better informed was actually a way more visceral experience. Um, being so self-conscious about it to start with and then finding myself just hours into the experience. And maybe it's because I conceal carry, but I almost forgot that it was there against the side of my hip or, you know, just down from my waist um, and visible. I... You know, I, I'm sorry to be, I'm still kind of geeked on the whole thing and I haven't really spoken with anybody about it, but it, yeah, it was that visceral, very visceral experience um, that it felt so natural, but that beforehand, and even on my way down, I was speaking with a friend of mine about how I had had to, you know, double check that there hadn't been any changes, no alterations to um, law uh, to where I was going to be traveling. I also knew um, I'm in Nebraska. I was on my way to Kansas City, Missouri, but it was also possible that I go over to Kansas. Now, you know, I've been a fan of Gizzard Gary for a while, and he keeps us pretty well informed on what's going on in his neck of the woods as well as nationally. So uh, his usual chats of uh, I just needed to double check. Is Kansas as free and easy as Nebraska should be? Is Missouri still as free as, and easy as it should be? The answers were the answers were yes. So how does that reflect and how did my constitutional carry experience change and my um, feeling about it? Because certainly I supported constitutional carry <laughs> beforehand, but being able to exercise that right just reminded me that there's that much more work to do. 
How is it that we can have it some places? How is it that you can change jurisdictions and have such stark differences? Now, of course, I'm not being disingenuous there. I know it's because of legislation. It's rules and regs. That I understand. But how we can't be more, how the greater perception is so ill-focused. I just, I'm in the Midwest. Of course, I think of myself as being an, an Omaha, a Nebraskan, someone from the Midwest, an American. But <laughs> to have to take myself from that very hyper-focused, you know, citizen here all the way out, I just, wow, need must be. Every effort that I make going forward is finally with, uh, you know, with the blinders off a little bit more. Sorry, I got a little unfocused there, barbecue. But uh, point me, point me towards the, point me towards the pen. No, you're good. So, uh, yeah. And uh, let's get back out there to the uh, the text for just a moment. Uh, I was saying, <clears throat> like gun websites ads. Constitutional carry is a very authentic experience to carry a gun with the trust and respect of the whole country. As such, all who partake are truly authentic, peaceful individuals, <clears throat> excuse me, exercising their freedom and creating a safer community. Later, he says, in my opinion, a DJ Play Nice should do a video to after action the experience before the effect dissipates remember the walmart walks discussion i do indeed yeah that's that, that's a good idea and, and i'm, I'm kind of glad that this is my first you know this was the virgin step into discussing this and, and making my observations except a few specific individuals in private conversation so wasn't expecting to be on stage in that regard tonight um Parsing back up there. Um, let's see. South. Uh, okay, Alexander Rocker. And I'll get back to you, uh, South Florida DCL. Sorry, I had to uh, follow through on this line here. But uh, Alexander Rocker says, I see the difference in gun laws between the states as being them having varying degrees of willingness to acknowledge their residence to a right. No matter the state, our defense is our entitlement. Yeah. Um, as well as the entitlement, because I, I think I feel what Alexander Rocker is saying there. And besides just the entitlement um, through, uh, you know, through uh, what our country has, you know, constitutionally, it's it's also it's a natural right, the right to self-defense. Now, I'm stepping away from keep and bear because we keep and bear for defense, um, or at least in this regard that we're talking about right now. So it's it's a human right. It's, you know, by birth, we have the, the necessity, uh, should we wish to preserve our lives, um, the ability to do so. The restrictions are real issues here, more than anything else, I believe. Head check me if I'm wrong there. But there's no reason to not believe that human, the value of, human, of humankind, of each individual's life. To defend it against death from or, or harm from another, regardless of what force that takes, I the schism there is just so confusing. Um, why are things? And again, I'm thinking from the form of from the position of de defense. I don't wish to go out and cause harm. So why is it that people perceive perceive some folks perceive? that the presence of a weapon indicates offensive action because of their environment they're uneducated etc you got people who they the way they have only seen firearms is in a negative light they have never seen a firearm used for good they don't have that luxury that's one nice thing about uh tony simon and uh, 2A for E and the diversity shoot is he's going into areas where he could be encountering people that haven't seen a firearm use for good, that aren't familiar with that idea even. And he's giving them firearm education and, and showing them, hey, no, these are a good thing. And, you know, yeah, there, there might be bad people with them, but that's why you need one 
is to protect, protect yourself from those people. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I'm an urban dweller. And so I'm, I'm always aware of my surroundings, need to be aware of my surroundings in, in order to avoid harm or just have that general situational awareness. You know, I'm not trying to stare at the sky and go, the sun and go blind. Um, huh. I, I'm not able to focus very well right now. I have so many things, you know, fl flooding through my head. So a reaction video is definitely a way to go. And I appreciate that from uh, gun websites. Um, let's see, South Florida DCL checking in saying constitutional carry in the state of Florida has never stopped. And uh, that it's perhaps the police department um, that is less aware of those of the laws and any restrictions that might be out there. Um, for conservative these days people are brainwashed into fearing everything the, yeah the culture of fear is uh, definitely an issue there and everywhere we you know it seems everywhere we turn uh, it's a bad news day there's something more that we should be concerned about there's some other attendant stress to just you know what is already a difficult existence some days and for a lot of folks out there don't see a lot of positive stuff because we're, I don't know, being shaded by it or shaded by all the negativity. Um, I don't feel that in our, in our community. And by that, I don't mean Omaha. I mean the group of folks who is part of this chat, part of the, uh, the Second Amendment. Uh, I don't well, want to say you it, feel it in our community, in the two community and say this is a group of people that wouldn't be um, misled by propaganda that is anti-gun or anything else it's you know this is the echo chamber per se where we're all sharing these same ideas of hey you know like tpc just said um like i had just said like you you said you know we're, we're all well aware of those things so there would be no reason to feel those things in the community now if you have a new person coming into the community that'd be different, but they're already open-minded enough to start dabbling in that and become educated. Absolutely. I like the, uh, I like the support. I like the, uh, you know, the open-mindedness, um, and certainly the appreciation, uh, for individuality and, uh, for, you know, stepping forward as positive contributors, not just to this small, uh, fraction of our, daily you know daily life and and social interactions but the, for the greater good um too often i think that uh, firearms rights and uh, folks that are into firearms are are seen as a you know some kind of darker force um simply isn't so and i think that's maybe what i was feeling right there in that moment uh poor conservative says uh, i make every day a so i want to go back to what uh florida dcl had said um i'm kind of Confused on that one, sir, uh, saying that constitutional carry is never stopped in Florida, being as you guys do not have open carry unless you are traveling, like, to or from the range, I believe, or you're going fishing or hunting or something like that. Otherwise, you only have concealed carry, um, which that is not constitutional carry then. So if you could... Uh, Fill me in, sir. I would greatly appreciate it because, uh, like I said, I'm just a little confused and I want to get my confusion cleared up. But, I think uh, Four Conservative has some good advice out there. Uh, it says, he's a very happy person he just avoids the the idiots as much as possible <laughs> that's a that's a good policy like that i say it's getting harder and harder these days oh yeah for sure i heard about one last night about uh, i forget what state it was in but it was apparently uh i want to say it was a concealed carry class actually and there was apparently like five to ten antifa people there and they were doing their, like, what do you want to call it, training for to get the concealed carry uh, permit and stuff like that. And, like, half of them, they said that their stances were completely off. The one guy almost fell over trying to shoot. 
and at least one of them, as he was shooting, was saying, die, pigs, die. <laughs> All right. That, was that a concealed carry class, you said? Yeah, I think so. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. And they were surprised it, that they weren't just booted out right then and there, so. Were they doing it just to goof off, or? Oh, no, they were being dead serious. Like, they were all known Antifa members at that point. Gotcha. So, um, one thing I do want to mention, uh, anybody out in the text chat, because I'm pretty sure nobody here on the panel is, but anybody out in the text chat going to, uh, Kevin Dixie's, um, class slash seminar thing that he, I believe it's this weekend, um, that he's having down in St. Louis. Yeah, I'm not sure that I've got the series right, um, but uh, Shoot and Learn, uh, the one that's, uh, yeah, in St. Louis this weekend, I, I believe you're right. Um, I uh, looked into, I, when registration opened, um, I considered it. I went instead with Maker's Match uh, with the money that I had, uh, disposable income I had to do that one instead. But yeah, KD does some some great stuff out there. And I think he actually had a go live on Instagram earlier tonight. Anybody check that out? No, he's live on Instagram like every night. It's insane. Um, yeah. Always a great conversation, too. Uh, I always enjoy watching it when I can. But um, I know he, he had posted a YouTube video, I believe, yesterday about it. Um, <clears throat> which I'm not sure if he meant to make that video public like it was or if it was supposed to just be sent out to people that are going to the class because he said, hey, if you're seeing this, you're, you know, coming to the class. I'm like, I, I wish. So, um, but yeah, just curious if anybody is going to that. Uh, I look forward to seeing a lot of the videos coming out of there, hopefully, uh, from all the different creators and uh, see some networking happening and whatnot. Yeah, and I uh, see that Kleepus has joined the chat and asked who, who Kevin Dixie is. Well, Kleepus, I think that you're going to find somebody out there. Uh, Mr. Dixie is a is a, a wonderful individual. Uh, Gun Websites corrects me. It is the Train and Learn, and uh, there's a link out there for Minuteman University on him. So, uh, Kleepus, follow that link. Uh, I, I added that, uh, yeah, no other choice, and he uh, founded Aiming for the Truth. Uh, he's a 2A ad. Gun websites go on goes on to say, uh, Kevin Dixie is a 2A advocate at the top level, hosting his second annual training event for content creators. Yep. And one of the things that was uh, so I found so interesting about that weekend is it is jammed full of good stuff. Uh, not oh, yeah. just content, yeah, not just stuff for content producers. There's going to be range stuff going on. You know, like I um, haven't kept track very well about it, but. There was even, you know, talk of in those early days, I think it was when he had uh, Rob Pincus on a live um, where they were talking about setting up uh, 3D printers and getting everything going on so people could actually see what a live print is like, like in the fl in the flesh, so to speak, in the plastic, <laughs> so to speak. Um, because, you know, watching a time lapse or something like that, you know, is if you could be in the same room with something, at least this has been true for me um, in my life you could be in the same room with something it's going to be so much better than the book or the video experience um, the sights and smells sort of thing is uh, very important to me our four so, Mississippi Thunder rolling in um, yeah I and Katie's video yesterday uh, he was talking about things that they're going to have happening there I mean it sounds like a phenomenal time uh I will try and monkey around here, see if I can't find the link to his video from yesterday and uh, get it pinned out in the comments here. But uh, it's definitely something that is on my radar to do next year. Whether I'll be able to or not is a different story. But um, like I said, definitely on my radar. Uh, I know he said they're going to have like a just a 
handgun class for, you know, like defensive carry, whatnot. And then they're going to have a handgun class aimed more towards at uh, a competition side, I believe, which uh, I believe that one is being done by Rob Pincus. Um, he, he's pretty sure he said uh, Tony Simon will be down there uh, doing some stuff. Uh, they're going to have a rifle class. I think altogether he said you're going to need minimum 200 rounds. He said if you can bring more, bring more, but minimum you'll need 200 rounds uh, for all the trainings that they're going to be doing, which is, that's pretty cool. Um, like I said, just, it sounds like a cool event. Um, if you are a creator that hasn't heard about it, like I said, I'll, I'll try and get the link out there to his video. Um, sounds like really good stuff. Uh, definitely on my radar. Uh, yeah. So what else is happening in the two way world? Anything? Oh, uh, well, yeah. Uh, for closing out on KD's gig, um, we have some Missouri folks who uh, come into the room and uh, hang out in this cast. Um, you know, so if you need something to do this weekend, check out and see if registration is still open. I recall that the pricing was very reasonable. It was a surprisingly low amount um, for the yield that you might be able to pull from, from uh, an experience like that. And another quick thing here is imagine all of the eyes and ears that are going to be there. Um, you know, 200 uh, rounds on a range, but think about the company that, that uh, you would be in at an event like that or any other event. Uh, Defense Dad from Lincoln, Nebraska turned me on to uh, a, a new uh, training academy, I guess I would call it, um, not just a range, uh, where they're having all kinds of great stuff. going to be the site of the uh, MAG-40 uh, for Nebraska. Uh, South Dakota's is popping here in a couple of weeks. So, uh, yeah, training. Another, we've talked about that uh, many times before on the show. Uh, great opportunities out there, folks. Make sure you keep those uh, eyes and ears open for what uh, is in your area. Sorry, I'm overlooking uh, looking for that video. Right on John Brown Productions out there in the crowd. Uh, also, oh, we are joined by Jerry Parker and Angelina B is out in the crowd. Hey, um, ma'am. Gun websites uh, saying train and learn is more than a shooting class, uh, multi-day collaboration and advocacy and advocacy education too. Uh, yep. Some of the topics Clover Clover covers are included on Thursday too. Yeah. Um, okay. He. Uh, I know we talked like later that night. They're gonna have a uh, bourbon and uh, cigar thing going on. So you know th they've got somebody coming in doing like a twenty-minute thing on bourbon and cigars. And then if you want, they'll uh, give you a splash of bourbon. Um, and uh, the cigar company, um, Katie, apparently is taking care of the cost on all the cigars. So if you want to enjoy a cigar or something. Um, it's, it's just a great all-around uh, event. And if I did make it sound like just a training event, I do apologize because uh, that is really selling it short. For sure, for sure. We're uh, joined by uh, Two Live. Moo is in the crowd. Mm. Rock! I am not having any luck getting this pulled up. Well, let's see if uh, Makoyo is uh, really great at multitasking, all kinds of things, interwebby and otherwise. You were looking for uh, which which video was a barbecue? Hold on. You may have found it. Nope. Well, while you're looking for that, I think I'm going to jump in here and talk about, uh, for those that don't know what Ohio's constitutional carry bill reads as right now, I would like to read it for everybody to learn some stuff. So apparently, the way Ohio works as a uh, state legislator is we have something called a revised code, and basically, with constitutional carry, it does about 15 to 20 different things that they're trying to change in the revised code, give or take. 
Maybe a little bit more than that even. And it basically reads as such, and it's all these different things that are changing our class code, to rename the concealed handgun license as the concealed weapons license, to allow a concealed weapons licensee to carry concealed all deadly weapons not otherwise prohibited by law, to expand state preemption of firearms regulation to include all deadly weapons, to repeal a notice requirement for licensees stopped by law enforcement purposes, to authorize expungement of related convictions, and to allow a person 21 years or older to carry a concealed deadly weapon without a license. For those who want concealed deadly weapons besides guns would be, obviously, we're talking about knives, we're talking about batons, we're talking about brass knucks, etc., etc., which are all now legal in the state of Ohio, by the way. When they, nice. when they redid our knife laws, they allowed us to do brass knucks now. I don't know if you know what a sitis is. It's something from, like, the old school gladiator stuff. We can do those again now, which I don't know why you'd want to do that, but it's basically weighted boxing gloves, essentially. And those are legal in Ohio now, too. Wait a second. Weighted boxing gloves? Is that what you said? Yeah, that's pretty much... That's what I can... Well, that's the closest thing I could think of that would be similar in nature. Okay, no, I, I didn't imagine, you know... Uh, big, you know, red boxing gloves with just a, you know, a brick or a, a roll of quarters or something. But yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. The kind of things that uh, maybe they would use for speed bags that had like something across the knuckle sewn into the leather. Yeah, That's it was interesting. Like some weird like steel plate thing or something. I think back in those days or something similar to that. Wow, uh, I can't imagine people walking around in leather mittens like that all of a sudden to take advantage of something that's you know I don't know a, a less and a less than lethal. <laughs> uh, Gary, that's funny. Well, think, funny, but I, but positive, you know. Yeah, I was I gonna mean, say I think I think that knife law expansion here. I think it was back in it was either March or April is when it finally went into effect, and I believe that that was actually more towards the knives that were technically illegal in Ohio right now. Which there's so many things I can go to. I could have gone to Ohio's flea markets and bought, but I couldn't legally carry in the state because of the stupid like 1940s law that was in place right now. Before that. But no, it's been repealed, thank God, because we actually got that through the legislator. Yeah, and when it comes to, you know, uh, again, on the, de you know, the defensive um, aspect of what we uh, choose to carry, um, yeah, the, the restrictions on knives, you know, or other weapons, um, that's, you know, that's another thing where there's this, in this inconsistency that sometimes can really get you in trouble. I think, you know, Klepas is maybe trying to poke a little fun at the situation saying that, Carrying a pencil is illegal in Ohio. <laughs> but certainly there is, you know, a, a great inconsistency, you know, how long the blade can be or are things like a, a brass knuckle device uh, device. I'm not sure why I chose that word. You know, is that going to get you in trouble or perhaps one made out of plastic or rubber? Are there exceptions? Having to familiarize yourself with so many of the little quirks and differences, um, it's no wonder that people get hemmed up on things because there's that kind of inconsistency. Uh, you know, knife knife rights um, as a right to self-defense, uh, that's, you know, oftentimes I think so overlooked um, that, you know, I still will approach, you know, different consideration perhaps because of the federal, but, uh, you know, TSA, uh, it's like, oh, you know, oh, goodness, did I, you know, am I carrying a knife that now I'm going to need to, like, you know, mail to myself from a gift shop or something? That, oh, that's I'm pretty some... sure if you go through TSA with any knife, you're going to have to do that. Indeed. Cleep is going on to say anything that could be construed as a deadly weapon, you could kill someone with a pencil. Okay. Like, that's for real? Like, that's just... How, you know, how do you show intent between what you want to sign your checks with or, uh, you know, want to have to defend yourself? Yeah, that's weird law. Uh, the one thing I thought was interesting, too, though, was almost as soon as this happened and it became law in here when they expanded the knife laws and stuff, is you had a whole bunch of Democrat cities, including Columbus, obviously, because that's one of the biggest shitholes in the state. You have uh, Ginther there as mayor. And then you had, I believe, Nan Wiley, who is current mayor of Dayton. She's running for 2022 as well against me as Democrat. And she was like, I think both of them were both like, well, we're going to make something happen here in Ohio that's basically going to do, uh, we can do things at like a city level or whatever the case be. Almost immediately after that, you had the Republican majority here be like, go fuck yourself. 
we're doing other stuff to expand upon these knife laws and allow them to basically do pre preemption because this is not the only preemption piece of legislation in our legislature right now. There's also a couple other ones that specifically say, Hey, you can't do this against the transportation, manufacturing, et cetera, et cetera, of any knife, knife components, or anything else for that matter that would make like blades or deadly weapons or whatever the case be. So, you know, good on those people for doing that. So I just looked all over the place. I can't find that video. So I'm thinking, like I initially said, that, uh, you know, when he opened that video, he's like, hey, if you're seeing this, you know, it's because you're going to be coming to the event. So he probably realized that it was public and I'm assuming probably just made it unlisted or something. I don't know. But either way, it's not showing up anymore. So which is unfortunate because, like I said, I think there is a lot of good information and there, obviously, you know, if he does one next year, um, you can't expect the same exact things to be happening. But it would give a good overview of what he's doing at it and, you know, what you could hope for next year, I'm sure. So, um, yeah, like I said, I can't find that. But um, anything else happening out here in the chat? Yeah, it does. I, say I, I heard think... we were talking about stabbing people with pencils. Uh, that happened to me when I was a junior in high school in my Spanish class because apparently the girl that I sat behind was definitely afraid of elbows. And I had turned to crack my back and apparently my elbow had gotten too close to her and she stabbed me with a pencil. I'm going to say, so I, I am for Ohio and their no number two uh, pencil carrying <laughs> laws. Go with them. Also keeping things... Uh light and amusing uh, gun websites out there saying pro tip if the knife is only nine millimeters long it is not a deadly knife since nothing nine millimeter is deadly that's something else i was going to point out is uh that's another reason that the pencils can't be carried because if you ever look they are 0.7 millimeter not 0.9 millimeter and because if they're 0.9 millimeter that'd just be too much like nine millimeter and they would have no problem with you carrying pencils to be like again no threat Clepus, uh, bringing it back to ground, uh, touching down with reality, says, awesome TSA knife tip. Carry a folding box cutter and discard the blade before the airport. Then go to Home Depot, get a new blade. That's not bad. That's a lot less expensive than this uh, guy I know that from D.C. who does a lot of travel. He simply takes his, the cab on the way to the hotel. He stops at a hardware store and picks up a new knife and then he hangs out with you know uh, friends he usually he's a very very social guy and he just gets that knife uh the night before he leaves yeah that wouldn't be bad let's say uh yeah a lot of people like to knock them but those ozark trail knives from walmart especially if you're doing something like that where you're like oh i gotta get on this plane and fine you know you gift it to somebody here you go uh, I actually got one from Travis P11 um, when I was the winner of his Patreon giveaway uh, many months ago. And honestly, I, I EDC that knife. I, I EDC a couple knives, uh, including that one. But um, it's actually held up fairly well. I, I was genuinely surprised by it. But, and again, you know, is it going to be top notch? Is it probably going to break at some point? Mm, probably. But when you're talking about something that, is just going to be a throwaway eventually. Go spend the four bucks on a friggin' Ozark trail knife. It's not going to, you know, if you need it for self defense or opening a box or cutting a shoelace, whatever it is, while you're, you know, away from home for that, what, week maybe, it's going to do the job just fine. Absolutely. Any port in the storm. And uh, Woods is out there with maybe an occupational hazard uh, saying, He's been stabbed dozens of times by pencils. Yeah, see, I bet, I bet he would get behind this uh, Ohio law. We're not crazy. This is the one thing that they, those Ohio people have gotten right. That and not inspecting their cars. So you guys got two things. Go you. I'd also like to say uh, just a happy birthday to Mr. PNW Woods. Oh, happy, happy. Yeah, he's out there. Everybody, uh, everybody, toot the tutors and uh, put on the hats. It's time to party. Uh, the 
left coast has got like what another two hours before uh he's a, a year and a day older so uh a nod to chicago that must be where uh Le- leo sorry red. if i get this wrong leo red um only carries a box cutter so in chicago you know you got to find in yeah that's the thing be aware of what what the restrictions are and work within them creatively I think I might have missed something for this comment. A chat full of blue bone. Blue about wrenches. Blue wrenches. Yeah, we, oh. it is. We're, we got 15 yep. folks in the chat. Let, let, me, let me get the actual ratio on that real quick, guys. It is kind of amusing because we got uh, Makoyo is out there. Kleepas is out there. G-Webs is out there. Woods is out there. Uh, who else we got scanning about that? Moo is out there. We're at five. Uh, well, I guess I could include myself there, but I, do I have a blue wrench? In the, yeah, that's me too. Yeah, so we're like, what, six? There's a half a dozen. Oh, I that is a pretty... Wrench. I do believe. Oh, I need to take that away. Oh, man. I try to use it wisely. Oh, and G23, too. So I think we're up to seven. Well, your seven blue wrench count. is probably a nine millimeter. It's useless. Oh, man. Nine millimeter spanner. But yeah, that that is a pretty lopsided ratio. Got to admit there, Leo Red. I got the name right. Okay, so cool. Uh, well, we've got someone else joining the chat. Not a name that I recognize. Uh, welcome, Guns and Stuff Info. Uh, good evening. We definitely have a good sense of humor out there for a Thursday night. I think people, everybody's uh, ready for the weekend. Um, Guns and Stuff Info saying, You, if I got a uh, Class 3 weapons license, can I make registered coat hangers for an AR-15? I do not believe so. Uh, no. <laughs> class 3 is just a dealer from what I understand. Uh, I believe you'd have to get, uh, I think it's an SOT to become a manufacturer of uh, full, full autos and machine guns. We have if, a if, so- if, if somebody out there is more well versed on that, please correct me if I am wrong, but I do believe that uh, class three is only a dealer license to deal in those, but not manufacture. Leapus with a really interesting uh, self defense um, armament that I hadn't thought about before, saying, Last I checked, lighters and hairspray are 50 state legal. G says that uh, class three licensing is not a thing. Yeah, we definitely have some uh, some some gentle jibing and riffing and joking going on out there in the comments tonight. Say this would be glad one, that one of those uh, great times to have Clover in here because that man is like a encyclopedia when it comes to all the FFLs and whatnot. Can't tell the players without a game, uh, program. But yeah. Um, so guns are cool. What kind of uh, firearms you've been taking a look at lately, Barbecue? Guns and stuff info. Um, if we can't get the answer for you, I would definitely go check out Clover Tech. Maybe shoot him an email. Uh, I'm sure he would be willing to answer your questions. Uh, that or probably just be able to find everything on the ATF website uh, that you need there. What guns am I looking at? Um, would like to find one more AR pistol, but I want this one to be in 300 blackout just because. Well, just because. And uh, now with the talk that they are potentially going to be taking a look at pistol braces again. Um, I'm kind of up in the air like, what do I do? Because finding a 300 blackout upper, uh, I mean, I can assemble the upper, but it's just a little bit more work than I feel like doing at home. 
uh, with the tools I have available. So finding one assembled with all that fun jazz, it's a bit more expensive than I would like to pay right now. How about you? Well, we guys? definitely have eyeballing? Some... Yeah, you know, I, I went ahead and double checked on there. There's uh, it's still in the offing. Not uh, you don't know what state of production it's in yet. But uh, the Ivor Johnson uh, folks are bringing out a dare, you know, four uh, four shot Derringer that I'm just really, really uh, kind of hardly waiting for. But that's the only new firearm I've been thinking about. Got a lot of different projects going on, including what might be my virgin ar build i think i have finally decided to succumb to that force and uh matter of fact we uh, were talking about doing one in blackout um that's what i would like to chamber for uh thinking about doing a pistol version um Klepus out there is uh, wondering about the whole um brace thing that might be going on oh and by the way i went ahead and i uh tossed out the link for the atf uh the newest uh, thing that's going on with those with uh, that agency so check that out for specific information but yeah think about doing a, a pistol build um, 11 and a half 300 black um, not too sure about the rest of it but yeah if, it, if I'm going to have a, a pistol uh, version of something like that I think I'm going to tr try it for the first time should be it's I'm kind of excited nice nice so uh, we have PNW Woods joining us how are you sir Welcome. Yay! Birthday. Happy birthday, man. Yeah, made it to 50. Ha ha, nobody would have guessed that. That would have been shot a long time ago. Come on, mount the SOB. But you'd think somebody would have taken care of that. But um, So it's Apple funny because I'm facing this. I got, these guys know I, I have to fly to Houston in uh, the big middle part of June, which I'm pretty sure as a Northwest boy, I'm going to instantly melt and die. But had that problem, like, don't really want to, like, because I'm going with a bunch of teachers, I don't really want to have to check guns because I have to kind of stay with the other teachers and, like, it's an extra process that I wouldn't be able to do and then I'd have to do my own thing. But one I do at ballparks all the time is I've got – my knee's not great and I'm old and fat, but get yourself a cane. You can go damn near anywhere. That's a really great solution for something like that, Woods. Good call. Good call. Yeah, I've got a cane. I just hit people with it whenever I feel like it. Well, you've got a good excuse, but like it, it's great for like say I go to go to a Mariners game or something. They you go right walk right through the metal detector with the cane in your hand. You know, just saying. And, you know, I don't know that there would be restrict. I mean, do we know of any cane restrictions? I was just trying to think of, you know, what they're composed of because um, there's actually a, a company uh, here in Nebraska. I have one of their canes, but it's actually for live. It's a livestock cane, but it, it is uh, and it's metal. Uh, when you said metal detector, you know, walk through, it's like, yeah, you don't even have to. You can just probably walk. You might not even have to put that on the belt kind of self-identified. <laughs> As long as it doesn't have like you know a shotgun in it or, uh, oh or yeah, yeah. to totally. shock people with or like an actual weapon, but what are you going to do? Tell me I can't have my cane. I'm going to be like ADA and then hit you with my cane. <laughs> <laughs> like you're being tyrannical. So my great grandpa. Right Heck yeah. The thing is, nobody's going to ask questions. Oh look, he walks with a limp. He has a game. Great. Oh, check this out. Patriot in the Dark uh, checking in checking in and saying, check out Patriot King. Uh, they're out of Florida. Veteran on self-defense walking canes. And uh, that they're weighted. Hmm. Uh, X nice. Adam 1 did want to know where to send Gorn uh, for this show. We, I don't think that that has happened yet. Uh, X Adam 1 with a great idea there, perhaps, Barbecue, um, says that uh, sent an email with a picture, tried to make the font larger so it helps it help you helps you to read it. All right, let me go monkey with that. See what I can get done. And, and you know, Woods has you know reached that half century mark. Uh, and congrats again on that, man. 
Uh, glad you're around. Um, Kalipas is saying, um, need a cane real bad. Don't want to be made of, made fun of for having one at, uh, at uh, their age. I can relate to that. I have one. And uh, I only need it sometimes when I know I'm going to be doing a lot of stairs. Um, but speaking of stairs, spelled another way, I don't like drawing attention to myself, not only because of perhaps the vanity of not feeling all of 50 and 1, uh, but also because that it, it kind of sets it up for some folks to be thinking they can take greater advantage of me. And the fact of the matter is, they can. I'm not as mobile as I once was. The whole fight or flight is turning way more into fight than flight because I can't fly so far or so fast. Yeah, I get you. I'm only going to use it when I, when I travel because I, you know, going to Texas and all, I don't want to, I can't really travel with a gun. So I'm going to have to have something in my hand because I'm not walking around there with nothing. That's, Silly. Yeah, you'll get in by a tiger. Especially yeah, for sure. They're getting, they recently just captured bacon. the tiger that was loose, so that's nice. But also woods luck, so I'm assuming there's more tigers. That can't be the only tiger. There's more tigers in Texas than the rest of the earth. I mean, there's a ton of backyard zoos here in Ohio, too. So. If it wasn't working, I definitely wouldn't go to Texas. Nothing against Texas. It's just Northwest Boy doesn't look forward to it. Me and the sun don't get along. For real, I'm right there with you. Did you guys hear that guns are cool? I didn't know if you could. They are. Always. So, did you just get something with maybe a stabby stick? Uh, it's not here yet. Still being. Uh -huh. But yes, and funny because you know I, you paid you know current prices. I didn't get super host, but. I have a whole bunch of friends that did the. I remember when eighty five bucks. I remember there were, they were you know a buck twenty five. I'm like, yeah, I can remember when the gas price was eighty five cents too in nineteen ninety. So relative, isn't it? Completely, completely. And you know, uh, depending on what it is, because if we're talking about something with a stabby stick, it's it's likely a former military weapon. Um, you know, those things are you know getting snatched up left and right not only is it anything it was anything that goes boom these days is, is in shorter supply and and military surplus yeah the days of having that so good are gone um you know a barrel full of uh you know ak's for 57.99 <laughs> or 47.99 <laughs> well, i don't to remember buying a mossberg 500 for a buck 25 used i mean you ain't got now Unless it's, you know, cut of, cut of crap. But I think it's funny. A lot of my friends were giving me a hard time on that. I'm like, yeah, you're still paying $4 a gallon like me. So it's not really that much. I actually wanted to bring something up here. And it was something that uh, Leo Red said in the comment section, which is, do we all think Texas is going to turn blue? And to that, I will actually say it will. If that dumbass Matthew McConaughey is able to get into office because he is super anti-gun and has outed himself several times on that front, so. I don't know how that would turn Texas blue, though. Uh, I think it would be the start of it, honestly. It probably wouldn't go full blue, but it would go purple for sure. That'd be like saying, because Schwarzenegger won California, that, that California went red. That didn't happen. Well, I mean, Texas got a pretty good population. I'm more worried about Montana. Because with people moving to Montana, they only had a couple hundred thousand people to start with. So if 50,000 people move there, that changes it drastically. Whereas I don't know how many people are actually moving to Texas. What, how many people do Texas have? 25 million, maybe? No, it's under California, probably. Yeah, the big thing about Texas, from what I understand, is uh, a lot of industries moving there. And a lot of people are following their jobs. So... Um, you know, like, uh, Musk and, uh, Tesla, uh, from what I understand, moving to Texas. So if you work at the Tesla factory or whatever, you got two choices. You're going to be unemployed, looking for a new job or travel with your job. And that takes people from California. But then again, you know, 
how many people are actually going from California to Texas in that situation. Idaho's got maybe that same problem because a lot of people are moving to Boise. Boise's getting pretty left. The rest of the whole state isn't, but Boise is. But that's where all the people are. So it's that old city versus rural. That's been going since, um, I don't know, humans, basically. The city tells everybody in the rural area what to do. It's probably not going to stop. But I think I'm kind of with the kind of with him that it's going to be, I think it's going to go purple for a bit. And unfortunately, we can't discount the cult of personality. You know, we talked about two actors just now, McConaughey and Schwarzenegger. Um, you know, people are just so enamored with, uh, with anything that's glitz, anything that's glamored, anything that is all kinds of Hollywood. And, uh, yeah, the, you know, it's the, the liberal aspect there is, is quite obvious. Um, but just, you know, I didn't, I didn't know that I would eventually say this, but the, you know, the actor politician that I think was maybe one of the best was Reagan. Am I wrong? <laughs> you know, he signed all kind of anti-gun stuff, right? Yeah. yeah he also and, and campaigned in '94 for the AR, AR ban. Right. Now, I wasn't thinking about. I wasn't thinking about uh, firearms specifically. I was thinking about someone who actually, you know, in addition to being an actor, was was not a bad politician. You know, didn't bring uh, maybe the contrast with the liberal versus conservative. He was, a, you know, even if he wasn't cool on gun stuff, he was definitely a conservative who did a lot of other things that did benefit. I was just so anti Reagan in the 80s because it just wasn't so about me. I'm surprised to have said that just now. I know CBS the other day was trying to say that McConaughey was going to be the next Ronald Reagan. And it's like, nah. well, I mean, if they wanted to go on the whole thing of him being all anti gun, then yes, <laughs> apparently he could be the next Ronald Reagan, but, uh, yeah, with the exception of that, I don't think so. Like, I think it would basically just be another... And the problem with actors in general, or just anybody in Hollywood, is they're handled by so many people, their ideas are never really their own. It's always like, oh, I heard something from somebody, and oh, yeah, let me get on this bandwagon for something or other. So, I mean, I could be totally wrong about McConaughey. He could be, like, the best guy ever, but from what I've seen from him personally at the March for Our Lives events and stuff like that, he's all like, no, you only need to do hunting and everything else, and he's like has no idea what the Second Amendment's really about, is what the problem is. Anybody think Dwayne The Rock Johnson's going to run for president? He jokes about it in his TV show. The Young Rock, he's running for president in the show and telling stories about when he was a kid. So he's kind of he's kind of kidding about it. But I think that'd be weird. I, I would think he's like half kidding, half serious because he's been saying that for like years now. I think he was saying it when Trump reigned and stuff like that. He's like, oh, I should probably run for 2020 or whatever the case be. And then he backed Biden and everybody. And it's like, mm, yeah, whatever, dude, then. Like you're just another shit like everybody else is, dude, just like LeBron James and everybody else like that. Well, I've already told these two my, my plan. I think we need to get Dolly Parton to run for president. Dolly 2024. Who's the running mate? I don't know. She'll figure it out. Right on. She knows, she knows business. She's a great lady. Great American. Gives out books just to give out books. Has done it for years. Doesn't really like to talk about it. Paid to do the COVID research on her own money. Knows how to run a big, giant business. We're just going to pick random people and not actual people that know anything about government. Let's pick somebody nice. Well, that'd be a definite transition uh, for political office from Hollywood to Dollywood. I support that idea. I could probably back it, but I would actually want to know like who her lieutenant governor is because just, and I'm not trying to say this out of disrespect, but like just given her age, I don't know if she'd make it the entire term. And I want to make sure we're not just handing it to some jackass. True that. I'm mostly just kidding. She's not. The problem with 
all those highest levels is everybody that has been near that. Like one, I think a great idea from a long time would be Condoleezza Rice. The problem is she knows that job really well and she wants nothing to do with it. So the people that really want that would, that we would want to have the job don't want the job because they know it sucks. Yeah. And I think that's the problem with a lot of things. And, you know, like as someone who is running for Ohio governor, do I really want to be a governor of a state? Not really. I'm just realizing everybody else in the race is either an establishment piece of shit or is a fucking idiot. And it's like, would you rather have those people in power here? Or would you rather have a guy who actually gives a shit about the second amendment is what it is. And the constitution for that matter as a whole. I'd vote for you just because your beard game's on point. Did you already ask them what they did? It was two A today. Oh yeah, we've been on we've been on that, but you didn't contribute yours. Uh, right. Birthday distractions couldn't have been enough. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I ended up with nine pounds of bacon, and um, I had a little kid who's also it was her birthday today, so I had to eat a bunch of cupcakes, and I wasn't all that two A ish. I'm like one and a half A. So I'll get back to, to it tomorrow, but it didn't really come up. Well, cupcakes and bacon sucks to be you, eh? Yeah, I had a ball today. It was a good day. I had about 100 kids sing happy birthday to me. Following you something guys, like that, it's hard to have a day go wrong. You guys made me laugh on the pencils. Working behavior disorders for most of my career. I can't count how many times I've been stabbed by a pencil. When a kid's going banana cakes. Graphite poisoning. Yeah, I'll be all Occupational right. Occupational hazard, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Xadam one's got uh, something interesting out there in the text chat barbecue. Does everyone here have a nightstand gun or just your regular gun put away somewhere? Well, that's a good debate. I think staging guns is something you should only do if you don't have small children in your house. But there's also an OPSEC part of that. Do I have a nightstand gun? Yes. And other guns place places. How about you guys? I'm I'm the same way. I do have one that's right there, you know, not in a drawer or anything, just out next to the bed. And then again, I and I do not have children, so I am able to have guns staged um, everywhere. But realistically, we would never ever need them. Like that's assuming I don't have the gun that I'm carrying with me. That I almost I wear it in my. I don't know about you guys. I don't take my gun off when I get in my house all the time. I go. I'll do a lot of stuff and still have my gun on because I'm just. I've been carrying since 92. I'm totally used to it. Like it just is. Yep. Yeah. Like right now, uh, with a two year old running around, I don't have anything staged because he's two. He doesn't understand. Um, before he, he was born, uh, I had firearms staged and I, I have two other children. So given their ages at the time, uh, the youngest was probably four when I had stuff staged and um, I never had an issue. And again, this goes into, like we've said many, many times in the past, you got to know your children. Um, you know, what's okay for one person isn't necessarily okay for another because again, you got to know how your children are. But I knew that with what I was instilling in my children, that it wasn't an issue. Uh, it was actually kind of amusing when I went to move because it was time to get all the firearms out of the house and I was like, okay, well, I got to go grab this. I got to go grab that. And uh, my parents are just kind of sitting in the living room as I'm going and gathering up everything. And they're like, I finally get done. It's like, is that all of them? And I stop and I think, I was like, yep, that's all of them. I like Two Live Moon. He's got 
so three nightstand guns all in those handgun safes. I think those are fairly effective. I mean, is it super ideal? No, but I mean, at least you've got some measure of protection between like kids getting a gun. We all are trying to avoid that because yep. there's zero for that. Or there's the part of the discussion, and as a heavy sleeper, it's something that I have to consider um, someone gaining entry to the house before I'm aware of their presence and having access to something that I have staged. Oh, I get it. Clepus had one that uh, I can't stage gun, you know. Because they're too young for uh, a nightstand gun, which makes sense. So I asked, uh, what about an under-the-bed shotgun? And said the kids are too snoopy. I'm like, I get it, for sure. Then don't do any of that. Yep. Well, other adults in the house has one. That's good. Yeah, the one thing I actually do like is those, uh, what do they call them? The little stand things that you can like throw the RFID things on and they just pop down. You have like the guns in there. Yeah. Those are nice. And they ha there, there's a few different companies that make stuff like that. Like there's a couple that make like beds, it's uh, like headboards. Mm -hmm. Pop it up and it'll pop out a shotgun or whatever you have staging it. And they're getting much better at it. the first generation. I'm like, we're always like, it was, uh, if you knew anything about guns, it was like, well, there's a gun in there. But now they're getting ones that just look like you bought a shelf from Ikea. Oh, somebody so read that nice. on one there. That's that's good. What's that? I'm with them. I'm with them. Doesn't have small kids. My gun is on me until I go to bed and it's in my bedroom. Kids know that something happens where the gun in the house is if an emergency happened. My girl was taking out the trash to the dumpster across the, across the apartment and two guys had it and shot each, shot each other within 30 yards of her. It's good to not have to look for it. City life. Adam, I live in Tacoma. I'm with you. They film cops here for a reason. <laughs> I knew G was going to be all like, I don't think G's a fan of, of staging. Sleeps in a water hammock, a hybrid between a water bed and a hammock. So I find the perfect nighttime gun with a bayonet combo that's been difficult. I wish there were more YouTube reviews. Sorry, I'm trying to get into my email still. All right, so I'll just cut time. So for my new SKS, I feel like I should just go with the um, the stripper clips, but I did get one of the magazines, but it seems sacrilege. Thoughts? Get a magazine. I've always been like a fan of strippers. They made them, a, made them for a reason. Yeah, I mean, I have one, but I'm like, it's not like that's the one I'm going to go to battle with. I think I bought it just for the, I think it's really just a bayonet with happens to have a gun attached for me. <laughs> Which, it is nice to get to a point in my life where you just buy guns because you feel like it, not because it really has any practical purpose or, you know, the method of operation or something. I don't care about any of that. I'm to the point guns. I buy guns that make me giggle now. I don't care. Hence your possession of an Altor. That is one of the more amusing guns out there. That's affordable freedom right there. Any American can afford that. I don't care how shitty your job is. At least you got one shot. It's better to stick. It's really starting Problem. to fucking piss me off. So are you still having problems with the with the interwebs and the in the typing of things? 
Oh, I'm not muted, am I? Mm -mm. Whoops. Please stand by. We're having technical difficulties. Please stand by. And it's X Adam one that puts you there. <laughs> I said it used to the, the first ever Gorn uh, for the almost nightly firearms expo. Don't worry, X Adam one. We'll just blame DJ. He's like, I like strike. I like uh, Kleepus's idea. They get a chess rig, but um, all the ones I've seen are made for Chinese boys. And I'm a big fat white dude, so that's not going to fly. But I like where you're going with that. Yeah, I've thought about that recently because um, I noticed for guys my size because I'm in the four digits right now, and there is no battle. You're a thousand belts. pounds? No. I say like four four bills. You need to become a maybe. trainer. Yeah. Just be like beat that Tony. <laughs> <laughs> no, like the four hundred range or so. Um, but yeah, I noticed for guys my size, there's like nothing out there for battle belt wise and stuff like that, just because of how big I am. And I'm I'm not. It's not like I'm not trying to lose weight. It's just a difficult thing for me, and I'd much rather have something I can have right now. And I actually thought about creating some kind of a company just for larger dudes. Well, I know that there are some things out there, and though, you know, uh, Tony is a great example. I mean, his his shirts uh, go to Ginormo X, um, so to accommodate. You know, there, there are solutions out there. Um, I was once much larger than I am now, um, uh, you know, maybe a quick solution is you you can combine two, you know, two larger belts into one. Mm -hmm. But there are solutions. There are some solutions out there. If anybody's got some ideas for that, some uh, some plus size gents, um, go ahead and put something in the text comments. We'll check it out. So, Tima, oh. at one point, um, the heaviest I ever saw on a scale was four twelve, and. Uh, at my doctor's appointment today, I was 247. So get with me after the show, and I can tell you some of the things that I did. Now, okay. full disclosure, I did have bariatric surgery. However, before the surgery, I lost 82 pounds on my own. So I, I honestly didn't want to have the surgery. Because I was like, I've already lost 82. I know what I'm doing now. I can, you know, I, I was averaging like five pounds a month or so uh, weight loss. And I was like, you know, I can keep this up. No big deal. But uh, my neuro ophthalmologist, uh, it, it all went back to my hydrocephalus. And if my shunt stopped working, uh, that there is a very, there still is a possibility that I lose the rema remaining vision that I have. But um, if my shunt stopped working, it would pretty much have been the death nail uh, in that coffin. So, um, and apparently there's a link between obesity and hydrocephalus. And that was the reason of, oh, hey, lose this weight to hopefully reverse the hydrocephalus. And then if the shunt stops working, you cure the hydrocephalus by losing weight. So, um, like I said, didn't want to have the surgery because... I knew what I was doing, but with having the shunt fail on me two other times already, um, the there is a very real possibility that that would happen. So, yeah, uh, I can give you some tips, pointers, all that fun jazz if you would like. Yeah, for sure. All right, so this has turned into the fat chat. I like it. <laughs> I resemble that remark. A rotund round table. <laughs> so going back to guns, um, I would like to take credit for Woods getting his SKS. Not, I, I didn't show it to him or anything. I, I know who pointed him in the right direction for that because I wouldn't have been caught dead where he got it from. But him and I were talking the one night and... Uh, he, weren't you talking about getting a forty-five seventy? Yeah. And I was Probably. like, mm, I, I wouldn't worry about the forty-five seventy right now because if they decide to go full, uh, full crazy, -guard yeah, and uh, he was right, banning you know <coughs> so-called assault weapons and all that BS, you're not going to be able to get an SKS. I was like, 
4570 is going to be there all day long, and which is like, I like how you think. Yeah, definitely. And I, I remember the chat we were talking about, it was probably an after, after air chat. And uh, you were totally right. Like I can get a lever gun anytime. There's even after whatever crazy shit they'll try to pull, but you can't always get that. But yeah. And I don't know about you guys. They were talking about fat jokes. I'm always about the fat jokes. So if you want to put a fat joke in the comments, I'm a hundred percent in and I will use it. I kind of understand what X Adam was saying. I don't have an SKS, but I like I've gotten one, but the prices are just not right for me. But I guess my kind of point is, is they're not going to go down by that much from here on out. Yeah, unfortunately not. <laughs> Moo bringing it. I'm so fat that I broke my leg and gravy came out. I think the last time I heard that was when people were throwing the dozens and it was your mama jokes. We need to we'll be walking a fine line, it seems like. I'm not going to do anything the SKS. I'm just going to shoot it way it is. I'm not going to get all bubba or get one of those stocks or make it all look weird. And like, it's already amazing way it is. Yep. It's a commie gun that um, it's, it's that old, like everybody says, like some of the cool things about the commie guns is we have them now because we're winning good for us. Yes. You figured it out over there, barbecue, or are you still struggling with something rather? No, it's being funny. It won't let me into uh, my guns and barbecue email on my uh, computer for some reason, and I'm not quite sure why. That's interesting. Uh, I was looking up Texas's stats, actually, going back on that for a second. And apparently, according to the 2019 uh, data, they had 29 million people living in Texas at that point. So I'm guessing it's only gone up from there since they gained, what was it, one or two congressional seats in the last go around here? I said 25. It wasn't too far off. Was it a good guesser? If this was the price is right. Do we get to go to the main showcase? I bet one dollar. Yeah, I know Ohio lost one. Didn't Pennsylvania also lose a congressional seat this coming go around whenever twenty twenty two election is? I don't recall. I thought both. I, I thought both of our states did for some reason because I think I think both of ours went to Texas. Is what it was. I couldn't tell you what Washington did. I'm assuming more people came. Yeah, because I know Ohio is supposed to be going from 16 to 15 now when it comes to the 2022 midterms, which doesn't even make sense why we're even doing a special election for Marsha Fudge's vacated seat right now. <clears throat> which that's supposed to be come, I think, August something or other. So. <laughs> I 
I kind of want Mo to come in here and just tell us jokes <laughs> at this point. I was going to say, when it comes to Tuesday, I don't know if we have a topic for Tuesday yet. I but, normally um, pick the topic, like, a few hours before the show. Okay, because I was going to say, I don't know if you guys saw that uh, video out of, um, I think it was Augusta, Georgia, with Little Caesars, where the two chicks were fighting. Nope. I should, I should say the one girl was getting her ass kicked by the other girl, who was just, like, beating her for some apparent reason. Uh, I was going to say, with that specific one... What about uh, Tuesday nights being, would you come into a Deadly Force encounter? And if so, from what point of view and how would it, what would have to be from and all that stuff like that? Yeah, I like it. You're saying, would I get involved with two people I didn't know were fighting and one girl's just getting her ass whipped? Yeah. Do they have knives or guns or anything? No, it's no, just a it was little, just a... like, it's essentially, a, it's essentially one's beating the other up. And it would be like, what, what would you step in? And if so, like, at what point and... How would you go about it? That's a tough one because I'm not Batman. I'm Batman. Nick, we always hear about like, I'm going to defend all the world and everywhere. Mm, no, I'm not really going to do that. I keep my family safe. But, but if it's two girls fighting, I feel like I could pin one of them. It'd be all right. I might have just figured yeah. it out. Freaking finally. But, God damn it. You know, I, I changed it to 300 pound muscly dudes. I'm going to be less involved in that. Yeah, I'm right there with you, Woods. I, I think that, uh, you know, first, you know, chief importance is to, you know, anyone that can't defend themselves who's part of, you know, who your unit is and then, you know, then yourself and then uh, walk it out that many more steps. The idea that you need, anybody needs to charge in and break something up is just. I don't know why people would want to buck, you know, buck to that situation like that until someone's in danger, you know, in real, like in mortal, mortal danger. Um, I mean, maybe broken, not a good idea. Uh, people that I didn't know, I've broken up tons and tons of them, but my gun doesn't necessarily need to be involved in any of that. Precisely. But let's not talk about it too much because then you have nothing to talk about on the Tuesday, but like, like the idea. Most definitely. Oh, actually, I wanted to tell everybody before we end this one out. Uh, like a week ago, the Ohio General Assembly actually a bunch of Republicans brought through a piece of legislation that would basically make it so that you cannot discriminate against any firearm or any other kind of manufacturer of two A stuff. I like that. I guess basically as long as you would have, I think it was something along the lines of the way I read it was I'm going to talk about it tomorrow on the uh, Constitution's podcast, because from how I read it, it was basically something along the lines of, as long as you'd be involved with a company, you can't discriminate against other companies based on anything, really, is what it is, as long as they're, like, the same exact thing. Or a similar type of thing of, like, relating to Second Amendment and whatnot. We'll have to make sure on that one before I'm... I don't want to totally go off and say it was that specific thing, because I think... I need to reread it again just to make sure on that one, so, I'll, like I said, it'll be tomorrow on my, cha my channel at uh, 6 o'clock normal time. Eastern Standard Time, I should say. Yeah, I've been digging your videos. You always broadcast them when I'm still at work and whatnot, but I like I like seeing them later. Wheel and wear alarms is out there. Good evening, sir. All right, well, as opposed to dead air, I'm going to brag about my winning birthdays in general. 
I got nine pounds of bacon from friends of mine today. Just saying, winning birthdays, winner, me. That's was awesome. it a specific brand or was it just bacon? Period. Um, they all went pretty high end. The top, the, the top shelf. None of it was crap, and it wasn't like farmland or anything. It was all great. One of them came from one of my. I didn't know who it was. A box of bacon from a bacon of the month club came to my house. And it was actually a student teacher that I've been helping all year. That she probably got her teaching degree. She's a buddy of mine, and she sent it to the house, but she didn't leave a note. So I had to put a thing on Facebook. I'm like, who sent me a box full of bacon? <laughs> So, like, my life's pretty amazing because I just come home and there's random bacon in my house. It's just good. And bacon of the month club, that's certainly the gift that keeps on giving. That's awesome. And what's funny is I'm sure she just sent the one the one uh, for this month, you know, and it's just a one-time deal. I'm 100% going to keep making that happen. You're going to send bacon to my house? Yes. I need that in my life. What are you doing there, DJ, what are you doing? Oh, sorry, I'm I'm tossing some uh, some links there. out there in the chat for folks. Got uh, the ATF uh, rules and regulation uh, stuff to take for everyone to take a look at uh, at your leisure, um, so that you can really uh, and it's some thick. I mean, you print it out; it's going to be a book. Don't blow your toner. Make sure you're parsing that online if you can. But uh, you know, try to get a, a, a good grip. I'm going to recommend to folks that you kind of get a grip on what it is that's out there in that. It's awfully confusing. There are some great resources out there to help uh, get through it. But uh, that comment period is, is nigh on upon us. Uh, I also went ahead and I, I always like to throw out the, uh, the capital switchboard number. Uh, we do a lot of talking about, you know, call your representatives, talk to your senators, your elected officials, get a dialogue going. Well, it's a phone call. And uh, that switchboard will get you to not just your own, but anyone's. And that's something to also keep in mind. If you're not aware out there, uh, you don't just have to limit your uh, communication with your, uh, the, the elected officials from your area. Uh, you can contact all of them. If you've got a spare 15 minutes and you've already pounded on the door, so to speak, of uh, your, your reps, maybe toss one to a nearby state, say, you know, as an, uh, an interested person from Ohio, I think that this is important for Pennsylvania. Uh, to be thinking about. And then, of course, I went ahead and tossed in the Supreme Court.gov uh, link so that you can go out there and uh, see what's happening with them. I like it. I like all the words you just used. <laughs> Yeah, making sure that we keep the flow of information going and uh, always trying to take a nod towards, uh, not just a nod, a commitment uh, to solid sources. You know, right there we have the ATF website. This isn't conjecture. This is what's out there. Uh, we have the official way to contact via phone. Uh, they will also, with the Capital Switchboard, provide you with other contact information. If you just need a clarification on an address or a person on a committee, subcommittee, anything up and down on Capitol Hill. They've got you covered there. And uh, then, of course, the Supreme Court website. Um, too often, I think that people decide to gather their opinions from the news that they consume, the information that they bring in. And uh, if you're not careful to give that a balance out uh, with oftentimes, I would suggest the reality of things. It's a little too easy to be misguided um, before you will commit to a line of reasoning or belief. Uh, always a good idea, I think, uh, to counterbalance it with some solid research so that you're forming your own independ uh, independent opinions and decision making. All right, quiet. I fucking figured it out. Check this out, fuckers. Woo! By the way, that looks freaking sweet. And if I'm showing anything that's like doxing X Adam 1 or anything, sorry, dude. Wait, is it up there yet? Okay. You got it. You're good to go. Sweet. So what is it that we're looking at? Did he say what it was in the email? I, I, my screen is all on a phone. I'm, it's awfully small for me. Smith & Wesson MMP 1522 pistol. I like it. Yep, that is freaking sweet. Good stuff. I guess I could have actually read the email, but I just exited out of all that. And I ain't going fucking back. 
<laughs> I ain't going, going back. back now. Yep. <laughs> oh, well, that might that Jesus. might be fun to have that as a uh, no. As, fuck that. Uh, you you shut your dirty little whore mouth. That. <laughs> <laughs> How long was I just fucking around with my email to get that? Good God. I mean, I probably could do it now because I um, finally... It was not letting me add another uh, Gmail account for some reason. I was having all sorts of issues with that. Finally got it to do it. Um, so it should be added now, so I should have no problem next time. But, uh, yeah, DJ, you shut your dirty little whore mouth. Making ideas like that. Good God. Yeah, apparently I have this thing for volunteering people for things that they don't want to do. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> about that, man. <laughs> so, everybody listening, please send a lot of um, emails to Barbecue to with all of your guns as much as possible. Yeah. We are his friend, therefore we have to give him a hard time because you know his weakness now. <laughs> yeah, if nothing else, consider it, consider it a warm-up exercise for his or Gary Thorne over the weekend. Oh no, That's the worst hilarious. part is I want one of those now. Fuck. They actually have the uh Smith and Wesson made the new ones. That uh it's like the actual like brace that you just put on your arm and stuff like that now. Yeah. I actually like those. I think that there's a couple of there's a couple different shops I found here in Ohio that have them for they did have them for sale. I don't know if they're still in stock or not. I think they probably got bought up at this point. But yeah, they're only like five hundred or so, I think is what it was, something like that, give or take. Which they'll probably come down depending on how things go one way or another. I mean, obviously, if prices keep coming back down or whatnot, maybe we'll get them for a reasonable price at some point. I think X out of one needs one for the other hand, though. Yes, 100%. I feel, like not, that's a, I feel that's a dual wield all day long. If you're not dual wielding MMP 1522s, <laughs> you're not man. Like, what's the point? If, if you're only wielding one of those, you're almost DJ. It's pretty bad. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Love on the DJ. Like I said, y you have become the uh, night strike of almost nightly firearms expo. Oh, zip it. Zip it. <laughs> We will not request to see you in a blue dress, though, because you would probably do it, and nobody needs to see that. That's right. I am the devil in a blue dress. No, nah, I think it would be more like Lady in Red. Ooh, rouchification, fellas. Right on. Uh. Boom. And DJ, you can only be known as DJ because John Crump knows you as DJ and he's spoken. Yep. Alright. It's hard to be everything to everyone. <laughs> I could have said it's, it ain't easy being cheesy. But that's back to Cheetos. He's got the fifteen twenty two rifle, so he could shoot both at the same time. So credit to Adam One, just saying. He had already thought of it. Well, thinking of it and carrying out the action are two different things. You're assuming he hasn't already done that. That's fact, not an evidence. I'm going to say, I've dual wielded double barrel shotguns. Freaking awesome. Would have been a lot nicer to do with coach guns, though. Yeah, that's gonna hurt. Indeed. But challenge accepted. Now I gotta buy another coach gun. Those are literally the most fun gun ever. You can just destroy shit. Yep. All right, that's a bunch of data. You guys want to wrap it up, or what are we doing? Yeah, that's what I was getting ready to say. Um, now that I finally figured out the whole email thing, got uh, X Adam One's uh, super awesome MMP fifteen twenty two 
shared because that was sweet. I always like some gun porn. Uh, we had a decent little conversation tonight for not uh, coming in with a topic or anything. Somehow drug this out for two hours. Uh, ben, double digit viewing for almost that entire two hours as well. Seems like uh, the Thursday show does better than uh, Tuesday as well from what I've been noticing. But yeah, so we'll go around the horn and get some final plugs. Uh, T-Mot, anything you'd like to plug, sir? Yeah, I'll be doing my 2 8 Constitutional podcast tomorrow. Like I said, I'll be talking about uh, that particular piece of legislation from here in Ohio, as well as a couple of different other things. Uh, if I can get any info on exactly what the amendments were that were added to a constitutional carry here, I will be talking about that. Otherwise, hopefully I can find something before next Tuesday, and then I'll bring it up then. Right on. DJ, anything you'd like to add? Or apply? I would like to. Uh, well, uh, a final for this broadcast. Happy birthday to uh, the man from the Great Pacific Northwoods, Woods. Uh, Mr. Woods, congratulations on reaching another year. And for everyone, uh, for those of us here and out there, uh, be safe, have fun, carry your guns, and as always, rock! And then, speaking of PNW Woods, anything you'd like to plug, sir? Uh, buy stuff at All and Anchor. Uh, they're amazing. And I don't really like patches that much, and I still buy patches from them. You can still get the Woodsy patch. It's 11 bucks. They still have some. Yeah, it's a pretty it's, awesome patch. It's the greatest patch ever made. I'm a little biased, but... Um, and I really like Kleepus' idea of the Chippa, that triple threat shotgun. I think I need that in my life, but I'm going to have to save up some nickels because three barrels is more than two barrels. Yes. Math. I actually had one more plug to make real quick. Go for it. I now have a uh, short, uh, I shouldn't say short store. I have a store on Bonfire for supporting my governor's run. So if anybody wants to buy a t-shirt of a bunch of different things, I, there's a bunch of different things on there. And uh, there's also um, at least one mug up there already. I'm going to be doing a couple more different mug designs as well. Coffee mugs, obviously, is what I'm talking about. And, uh, yeah, and I'm probably going to try to do hats pretty soon, depending if they'll actually give me the ability to do that or not. I don't know how much those will cost, but uh, everything else is around 20 for the shirts and stuff like that. So Nice. The mugs are like 12 or 13, so. Any way to give us a link over there? Uh, yeah, I can't do it while I'm in this because of not being on YouTube. Okay. Though. I'll give you a, I'll, I'm going to grab it real quick, and I'll just do it on the private chat if anyone wants to throw it up for me there. Oh, right. You got a barbecue? All righty. Well, I'd just like to thank everybody for coming and watching. Uh, much appreciated as always. Uh, go check out owlandanchor.com for awesome 2 way swag, whether it's patches, um, really cool with key tags. I really like the key tags, and she just got a bunch of those over there. And I'm going to have to go spend more money, damn it. Um, but... Uh, there's flags. Um, she just got an embroidery machine, so she's doing all kinds of awesome stuff with that. Um, definitely go check out alanacker.com. And while you're at it, make sure to head over to gearwebsites.com and uh, see what GWebs has good over on the store there. I uh, do believe tomorrow is Free Patch Friday. Um, if not G, uh, please correct me. But as far as I know, that is still a thing. So be sure to go over to gearwebsites.com, get some awesome stuff over there. I am a big fan of the playing card decks. I actually have a ton of them. Uh, I plan on doing giveaways here in the future. And those playing card decks uh, will come into play in some shape or fashion. Um, don't ask me when the giveaways are going to happen, though, because I don't have a clue. But, uh, yeah. So, we'll plug that. Oh, go to rnldisplays.com um, for New York Outcast. And uh, his display stands for the AR-15. Uh, I know he's working diligently on getting some other things up there. So, uh, you know, if you have Look to that. something like a you know, PC carbine, um, yeah. you might be able to get that on a display stand soon. Um, like I said, he's working hard on it. So I do believe you can use uh, discount codes now. I b try, I believe it's outcast or the other one might be g23 if you go back and watch g23's show on i believe it was saturday 
you'll be able to find it somewhere in that show. Uh, but yeah, so that's all I got. Um, catch you guys on Saturday for the barbecue chat. Hopefully, are you going have... to put up the thing so people can come in and talk to us after we're done? Yes, great, great. And say because I lately I've been like shit. I forgot to tell that's people to come in and talk to us. Good job, Woods. This is why I keep you around. This is why you are bacon and chief Woods. Just so we're clear, I just changed my name to what that bonfire uh, dress is from my shirt store. Brilliant. Oh. Love it. But yeah, so um, as Bacon and Chief Woods just referenced, I'm going to drop the link out here in the text chat. So anybody who wants to come into the after chat and hear us bullshit about whatever and participate in the bullshitting, have at it. I uh, hope to see you there. And like I said, we'll see y'all on Saturday. Or if we don't catch you Saturday, we'll catch you on Tuesday.